privilege of introducing our next presenter. Uh, this is a lady I truly admire, but what I admire about her and her husband, they have this beautiful young family, and they truly, 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 sorry, <laughs> they truly live out the ULA balance, and I just admire that so much in them that they can crush their business, but they really crush it in life as well. They're just a beautiful family, and she is going to present how, what is the official title? How to grow, mis how to fail miserably in this business and still end up a diamond. Let me present Miss Andrea Lehman. Here we are. Good. All right. So um, I had the opportunity last week to read. A, I'm not done with it yet, but start a phenomenal book called The Big Leap. Thanks, Ariana Fort, for recommending that one, wherever you are. If you haven't read it, write it down, check it out, read it. Um, but in it, it talks about fear. It talks about how when you're feeling afraid, you have a tendency to want to ignore it or deny that it's there. And one of our physical ways of ignoring or denying that it's there is to stop breathing. <laughs> but... This is really cool. So we apparently have a mechanism, the same mechanism inside all of us that creates fear and creates excitement. So catch this. Fear with breath is excitement, right? How many of you have felt some fear in starting your business? OK, good. Because I'm, I'm feeling a little afraid up here right now. So I'm just going to take a second to breathe. And it's going to turn to excitement. So the truth is that two and a half years ago, if I had been asked to stand up here in front of 350, 400 people, I would have said, heck no. <laughs> but I said yes. <laughs> um, and the reason for that is that in the last two and a half years, I've decided to work really hard on myself. And it's not that I don't feel fear anymore, but it's that I've decided to do things in spite of that fear because I know what's on the other side of that. Jeez, I'm going to get choked up. Deb, <laughs> seriously. OK, <clears throat> so here's my story. Eight, eight years ago-ish, uh, my mother-in-law, Deb, uh, introduced my husband and I to the oils. And they promptly, well, it was Christmas, Christmas gifts, little bottles of oil. Like, nobody knew about oils back then, right? So these little bottles of oil, they go up in our medicine cabinet, and they stay there. And she kept prompting me to use one called Thieves. And uh, so I finally gave it a try. I was a school teacher at the time, and I was picking up everything that was coming through the classroom. And it worked. You know, the first time I didn't believe it, right? Oh, it was just a coincidence. And then it worked again. And then it worked again. And then I ended up going a whole school year without having to take a sick day. And um, so I was actually the one, biggest skeptic in the family. I was the one that said, hey, we need to do this as a business. And they went along with it. So there began our journey hobbying this. Because in the first five and a half years of building this business, I was either a star or a senior star. And it paddled back and forth. For five and a half years, I was making two to $300 a month. For five and a half years, making an income that would replace my teaching income was a pipe dream. I remember a conversation in the summer of 2012, sitting in the front seat with a girlfriend of mine, and saying, if I could just make this Young Living thing work. And then we went to convention, 2012 convention, and we heard Bob Proctor speak. How many of you are familiar with that name, Bob Proctor? Some, OK. So he was in the movie The Secret. And he's, he's, yeah, well-known name. But he talked about creating a big, audacious goal, something that's going to make you like feel it here. And so I promptly wrote down. January 2013, I am silver. Now, at the time, I think this was in July, and I'm pretty sure it was one of the months where I was star. And so I you know, wanted to vomit after I wrote that down. But there was, something, there was something about putting it down on paper, right? So I got home, and I got to work. Um, I realized as I became more intentional that were a whole lot of things I was doing completely wrong for the first five and a half years, which is why I was star, senior star, star, senior star, back and forth. Um, 
And it's totally honorable, all the stars and senior stars that are here, because you weren't there for five and a half years. You guys are moving up. Okay, so I want to give you just some tips um, of how or what I did wrong, because when you know what not to do, then you know what to do, and you'll be successful. So, number one, if you want to fail miserably in this business, don't follow up with anyone. Seems obvious, right? But somehow we didn't get it. What would happen is we would help somebody to create their account, and then we would disappear. <laughs> I mean, I only have their oils, they can figure it out. I'm sure that there's somebody here in the Phoenix area that still has their little box with the plastic still on it, sitting up in a cabinet somewhere because they don't know what to do with their poor oils. Um, so write this down. The fortune is in the follow-up. The fortune is in the follow-up. And this goes for prospecting, but also goes for your current customer base. You want to make sure you're following up. Um, when somebody's kit comes in, meet up with them. Be excited with them. Help them get the oils out. Some of them will show up and they've never even opened it up. Open them up. Help them learn how to use the oils. Keep them in the loop with classes that are going on in the Phoenix area. Add them to Facebook groups. Help them introduce the oils to their friends. Accidental paychecks oftentimes turn into accidental businesses. Has anybody experienced that already? Are there any accidental businesses here because you got an accidental paycheck? Okay, so let's duplicate that. So if you want to fail in this business, don't follow up. If you want to succeed, remember that the fortune is in the follow up. Number two, if you want to fail miserably this business, do not give a clear call to action. I was, I was the worst at this. Out of the three of us, Deb and I know, I was the worst at this. So much scarcity mentality. So we would come to the end of a presentation, and in the presentation, we verbally vomited over everybody with like a thousand uses for each of the oils. <laughs> then we'd get to the close, and it would go something like this. So um, the kit that we just talked about is $150, but if that's too much, there's a $40 kit that you can get, and that will get you started. <laughs> Who's going to want to buy the $150 kit after that, right? Obviously, I'm not convinced that they should buy the $150 kit. So that was really how our closes went every time. And guess how many $40 kits were purchased? A lot. A lot. Were you a $40 kit? Oh, jeez. OK. <laughs> she stuck with it. It's only because I followed up about a year and a half later. I said, I'm back. I'm back. OK. So um, one thing to remember is to take the focus off you and put it on the person you're talking to. When we have the focus on us, and it's all ego, and we're all concerned about how they're perceiving us and what they're thinking, blah, 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 it's just no good. Okay, so you want to put the focus on the other person. You know and I know that everybody in this world needs oils, right? I mean, truly, everybody needs them. So if you keep that perspective and think about the value that it's going to add to their lives, your, your clothes is going to be done with confidence because they're going to see, oh, yeah, she's passionate about this. She really feels that I, I need this. Um, also, don't hold on to people's purse strings. I love that saying. Do not hold on to people's purse strings, OK? Don't decide who can afford something and who can't afford something. Let them decide. You're just offering something. OK, so um, one example of this, I've had two people in the last two and a half years when I really started building, one who I know she could have afford, afforded it, but she said, oh, I can't afford it. A couple days later, she went out and bought her coach purse, OK? So the second one was, I can't afford it, but I want them. And she held a garage sale, and she got the money to be able to afford it. So it's all about where people place their value. So you don't decide. You let them decide. Uh, so it's, if you want to fail in this business, be afraid to ask for the sale. If you want to succeed, have a strong close. Number three. If you want to fail in this business, don't share the business with anybody. Keep it your little secret. Um, for five and a half years, I shared with nobody. I had one person, one business builder on my team, and that's because she asked me. I hadn't shared it with her, but she asked, and I was like, well, yeah, there is this, you know, blah, blah, blah. I was a bundle of fear. I was afraid. Um, how do I explain the business? What if they're not interested? What if they think I'm trying to recruit them? Here's the deal, you have to share the business with people for this to work. Um, if you're not good at it, keep learning and keep failing forward, it's okay. That first year in business, it's just you're learning year anyway. You just keep failing forward. You're gonna keep getting better if you keep practicing it. And if you're brand new, let your sponsor help you. Whoever brought you into the business, let them help explain the business to people. 
The deal is if you believe that this is a great opportunity and if there are people on your team in your upline who are having success, it is absolutely an injustice not to share this with people that you love and care about and want on your team. An injustice. I can't even imagine if, if well, if Deb hadn't shared the oils with us and I hadn't learned about this opportunity, my life would be totally different right now. So keep that in mind. You have something in the oils and with the business of absolute value for people. And don't worry about who's, who says they're not interested because a lot of times those people who say, oh, no, no, I'm not interested, will end up being one of the most successful business builders on your team. I have some of those, too. Um, I have a friend, and oh, okay, and then also don't decide for people if they're interested or not, because I have a friend from elementary school. She, uh, we went to elementary school and then high school together, and she was valedictorian, and she went on to become a nurse practitioner, making six figures, and I had decided she didn't need this business. She's making six figures. She's doing well. I was a school teacher, you know, making 30000 a year, so in comparison, she was making tons of money. She doesn't need this. Well, I was at her house about six months ago, and um, she was talking about how she was jealous of the neighbors across the street because they were getting a facelift on their house. And, and I was like, well, why aren't you doing anything? And she said, because we don't have the money. So I promptly gave her a four-year career and said, read this and let's meet up next week. She called me two days later. She's like, okay, how do I start this? <laughs> All right, sweet. So I had totally decided for her that she wasn't interested instead of letting her decide for herself all those years. So if you want to fail in this business, don't share with anybody. If you want to succeed, share with everybody that you would want on your team. Number four, if you want to fail miserably in this business, become the resident oil expert. This was me for five and a half years. I prided myself on being the oils expert. Okay, I studied the reference book from Cut the Big One from cover to cover. I had my binder of testimonials on everything from heart disease to cholesterol to diabetes to on and on and on and on, just in case somebody asked me for you know a specific testimonial on them. I knew all the words, the monoterpenes and sesquiterpenes and blah, 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 everything, right? And um, Deb and Angie even called me the, you know, the science girl. But that didn't get me anywhere. <laughs> like I said, I was, a, I was making $200 a month to be a, uh, an oils expert. Um, <laughs> and I joke now that I know less about the oils and the science of them than I did then. And that's probably actually really true. You see, in traditional business, it's really good to be an expert. If I'm going to have surgery, I want an expert surgeon, right? But in this kind of business, it's not so important that you know so much before you get started or that you express all of that knowledge to everybody. You want people to look at what you're doing and you want them to say, I could do that, right? You want, this is duplication. You want people to believe that they could do it too. Um, if you want to be an expert in something, be an expert in this. How this business model works, so things like Big Al today, okay? And in understanding people. My favorite business coach, Danny Johnson, says this, learn more about people than you do your products and you will be unusually successful. Learn more about people than you do your products and you'll be unusually successful. So if you want to be, or if you want to fail in this business, become the oils expert. If you want to succeed, get to know how people think. Number five. If you want to fail in this business, do not plug into a duplicable system. Create and make everything on your own and make sure it's yours. You're not letting other people use it. Don't follow a script. Don't have a system in place for equipping customers and business builders. Sometimes ego gets in the way and we want to do things our own way. But if the system isn't broke, then don't change it. Trust the people who have come before you and are having success in their businesses. Um, systems work. We're so blessed to have Connie and Michael, who have just launched the Entrepreneurialers stuff. We've got the guidebooks. Hopefully, a lot of you went out and got guidebooks for yourselves and for other people. Um, great duplication there. Uh, so this business is about duplication. So if you don't want to be successful, if you want to fail, do your own thing. If you want to succeed, follow those who have gone before you. Number six, if you want to fail in this business, do not appreciate your customers. And this might seem obvious, but really, I, we, we may have just, I may have just been really dense because we didn't do anything to appreciate our customers early on. 
We didn't give reference guides. I didn't send thank you cards. We didn't have any customer appreciation stuff going on. Um, it is so important that you honor and respect those who are on your team. I want you to think about, um, how many of you have been to the Ritz-Carlton? Ritz-Carlton? OK. How many of you have been to Motel 6? <laughs> is there a difference in the kind of customer service you're going to get at those two establishments? Absolutely. OK. So as you are growing your business, I want you to ask yourself, what kind of service am I giving? Am I giving Motel 6 service, or am I giving Ritz-Carlton service to those on my team? So a couple of the things that we do on our team is we give out thank you cards. So when people create an account, I write a thank you card right away. Um, just, and I say, thank you for your business. Um, and I, in that card, I say, hey, let's meet up when your, your oils come in, that type of thing. Um, we, and then we give the reference guides as well. And then we, for business builders, we do all kinds of fun celebratory stuff on our team. I love our team. We um, rank advancements we celebrate on Facebook. Um, Thank you, or uh, congratulation cards, little gift cards, things like that. We have something we call the Senior Star Dinner when people advance to the, to the rank of Senior Star. Them and their sponsors go to an amazing dinner at this restaurant in Phoenix. Delicious. If any of you are not from Phoenix, you all should check out the parlor before you head back to your directions. Um, and we have something called the uh, Executive Retreat. It's just a night getaway in Sedona where we do um, some dreaming and visioning for our businesses together. So we have a lot of fun, and there's so much um, building culture and rapport on our team. And when you have that kind of culture in your team, it creates sticking power. And that's what you're looking for. You're looking to be part of something that has sticking power. So you are in control of creating that for the people who are coming onto your teams. And the deal is it's not so much what you do, but it's that you do something. Do something to show that honor and respect of your customers and business builders. So if you want to fail, in this business, do not appreciate the people on your team. If you want to succeed, make sure you do. Number seven, if you want to fail miserably in this business, do not invest in yourself. For five years, I didn't read anything. I didn't attend anything. I didn't listen to anything. Huge mistake. Stephen Covey says, our private victories precede our public victories. I had so much personal work to do. I had so many limiting beliefs. I had so much scarcity in my thinking. And truly building this, uh, this business starts with building you. I believe, truly, and I didn't, I quit, I quit my teaching job about a year into this. I really count the last two and a half years as me building the business before it's just hobby. But I quit my, my teaching job a year after really building. And I really had no idea when I decided I'm doing this that the personal development that came along with it was going to be more rewarding than the paycheck that came along with it. And that's just a really cool side benefit. I taught, I taught junior high and high school for 10 years, and I never had the kind of personal development that I've had since I started my own business. So that's cool. Um, when I started building two and a half years ago, I was a $30,000 woman. That's what I was making teaching. I was a $30,000 woman. And you can't be a $30,000 woman and earn a six-figure income. And you definitely can't be a $30,000 $30, woman and earn a seven-figure income. So you have to grow into that person. You have to grow into it. Um, I remember going to a personal development seminar. I'll just give a shout out. I love Danny Johnson for Steps to Success. A lot of you in here have been to her. Um, she, it, my favorite personal development seminar. But I went to that in uh, July of 2013. Seven months later, my business increased by 400%. It was the first, it was the first personal development seminar I'd been to, 400% in seven months after attending that, that seminar. So invest in yourself. Um, write this down. Your income follows your personal development. Your income follows your personal development. Think about this. A lot of you have heard about uh, lottery winners and how most of them, after they win the lottery, within several years, they're back to that same income level they were before and sometimes even worse than they were before they won the money. They didn't have the time to grow into that, to develop the, into the kind of person they would need to be to handle that kind of money. Um, Jim Rohn's one of my favorite, personal favorites, says this, work harder on yourself than you do on your job. Work harder on yourself than you do on your job. And this doesn't mean we don't work on our jobs. It just means that the most important thing is the personal work that we're doing. So if you want to fail in this business, do not work on yourself. 
If you want to succeed, make it a priority to do so. Number eight, if you wanna fail in this business, do not have set work hours. Okay, this is one of the pitfalls of owning your own business. It really is. Um, Sarah Robbins, one of our mentors says, you can work this business part-time, but not sometime. Um, when I was struggling for the first five years, we would host a class maybe every month or two. There's no momentum in that at all. Uh, in coaching, I've asked people, do you ever not show up for your day job? And the response is always the same. Oh, no, if I didn't show up, I'd lose my job. So you're willing to go to work consistently to help build somebody else's dream, but not willing to do so for your own dream, right? So it's so important to set your work schedule and stick to it for yourself. Um, I call it cheating on your business, doing other things when you should be doing your business. So you wanna make sure you have set hours and make sure that those hours are income producing. Most would agree that if you want to grow a sizable business, you want to set aside 10 to 15 hours a week to work on your business. Um, and get creative with how you get those hours. I know a lot of moms in here are stay-at-home moms. So maybe it's um, getting together with other moms who are growing businesses or, or have some, something else that they are wanting to do by themselves for a certain you know, number of hours a week and do some switching of babysitting. Okay? Set something, some system up like that so you can get hours. Get up an hour earlier than the kids wake up, even if that means getting up at 4.30 or 5 in the morning to get an hour of work done. Do something in the, in the afternoons or evenings when your husband gets home. Have a Saturday or Sunday where you get, can get a chunk of hours in. Get creative. We all have the same 24 hours, so we can figure it out if it's something that we want bad enough. Um, while I was still teaching that first year before um, I left public education, I decided to spend 10 to 12 hours building my business. I got up an hour early. I worked evenings and Saturdays. It was a full year, but I didn't regret it at all because in the long term, it has given me the ability to stay home with my kids. Now, this is all that I do. I mean, there's a lot of other things I do, but for work, this is all that I do. So I spend 25 to 30 hours a week on the business. And my line in the sand is 30 hours, okay? I could work, I could work 70 hours a week on this business, let's, let's be real. Um, but I'm building this for flexibility and financial and time freedom. And if it takes me longer to get to Crown Diamond and Royal Crown Diamond, so be it. It's okay. Um, I'm seeking ULA balance in my life. And so working more than 50 or more hours a week is not attractive to me at all. So if you want to fail in this business, cheat on your business. If you want to succeed, be faithful. Number nine, if you want to fail in this business, don't set goals and don't create a vision for your life. Uh, Mora and Michael talked about this a lot and a lot of the things I was going to say, you already covered, so I'm just going to touch on a few points. Um, 98% of people quit network marketing in the first year, 98%. So no wonder we hear that network marketing doesn't work, right? Because you're hearing from all the people that quit in the first year. Um, it's so important to see what you want and to see it as if you already have it. If you have a driving force, a compelling vision, it's going to keep you doing what you need to do, even though it's going to be like this for the first year. I love the visual in the four-year career book. If you, if you don't have that book, get that book and get a bunch of them to, to give out to people. It's, it's an awesome tool for building. But... There's a visual of a car going up a hill. So the first couple of years in this business is a car going up the hill. So you're putting in maximum effort and you're getting little payout. And then about two to three years in, you're kind of going like this. You're on top of the hill and you're getting paid for what you're doing. You feel like, ah, oh, I'm making a good wage. I'm making a good amount of money for the, the time that I'm putting into this. And then there comes a point and I think I hit this point in the last few months where you're like, um, this is crazy, okay? And then it just starts going down, okay? So you have to get past that first part, though. It's the only thing that's going to keep you doing it when it gets tough and when you have the ups and downs is if you have a compelling vision, place that you're going. Um, convention three years ago, so the same one where I heard Bob Proctor. Before I heard Bob Proctor... I was out in the lobby area, and there was this photo booth there, and the front of it said, future crown diamond, and I wouldn't take a picture in it. I, wouldn't, I, would, I was like, why would I take a picture and I'm never gonna be a crown diamond? That was my mentality, and so I didn't take a picture in it. So I had no goals, no vision. Um, and then Bob, 
And then, <laughs> and then Bob Proctor spoke, and I started reading things that built belief. My mind started focusing on possibilities instead of limitations. And I sat down to write my vision. And at that time, I was still teaching at this time, all I wanted was to make enough money to where I could stay home with my kids and I could be a classroom mom. That, that was like huge for me, to be able to do that and have that flexibility. It was compelling for me. And I got that. Within a year, I was able to stay home with the kids and I ended up homeschooling. I'm crazy. So I, I'm not a classroom mom. I'm, I'm a classroom mom every day. Um, but your vision will expand and change as you'll... That seemed so big, and then it happened. So then you have to expand and grow your vision. A couple of fun things that I've been able to do in the last few months because the income has, has gotten there now is I started CrossFit, and I am loving it. If you know colors or the, the gems, I'm a red or a ruby predominantly, and you like competition. So I, that's been fun for me. Um, and we just got a house cleaner, which is like the best thing in the world for me because I'm not green or emerald at all, and my husband has been our maid for a lot of years, so, um, so it's just nice, it's nice to have that. Um, but now, now my vision has grown, and we're super excited about starting in 2016, taking a month abroad every year, somewhere, somewhere new, and just spending time with our family a month abroad. Um, we have goals of paying off our house in the next four years. We have some causes we're passionate about that we're going to give to. We're just, it's, it's fun when you start visioning and dreaming. Um, so spend time on your vision. Pray and ask God to stretch you and expand your vision. And once you have a vision, it's important to create smaller goals and steps along the way so that you don't get overwhelmed. Sometimes that vision can feel really overwhelming when you feel like you're just inching along. So create smaller goals. What, what's your goal for three months, six months, nine months? And you want, so let me give you this image. I don't have a dog, but um, a Shih Tzu is a type of dog, right? So they're small, right? Shih Tzus are the little ones. <laughs> I'm not a, I have trauma from my childhood surrounding dogs, so I don't know a lot about them. Okay, I know, right? I need some trauma life. So um, if you had a treat and you held the treat up here, the dog is going to jump a couple times and give up because it's just too far away, and the dog knows I'm never going to get that, right? If you hold it down here, the dog isn't going to have to jump, and it's going to get bored really fast. But if you hold it about right here, that dog is going to jump and miss it, jump and miss it, but it's going to know that it's so, so close, and you're going to keep that dog jumping all day until it gets that treat, right? So think about that as you're creating your goals. One of the things that Bob Proctor said when he had us doing this activity was, if you write down a goal that you know you can accomplish, that's just a checklist. So you want to write something down that just kind of makes you squirm a little bit, okay? And that is what I call the God zone, okay? It's a little bit more than what you feel you can do. You got to rely on some higher power for that, okay? So write those down, and along the way, you keep doing that. Put it a little bit out of reach, a little bit out of reach, a little bit out of reach. Um, so... If you want to fail in this business, don't make goals, don't create a vision for your life. If you want to succeed, make sure you have your vision. Number 10, if you want to fail in this business, do not invest financially into this business. Don't give reference books, don't pay for stamps to send thank you cards, don't buy the Ula book, Eric Worre's GoPro, any of the Big Al stuff, Sarah Robbins' Rock Your Network marketing business. Don't go to convention, don't go to First Steps to Success, don't go to anything, okay? The truth is, if you are holding on to your pocketbook with this business, it will cost you much more than if you invested. I like to share with builders how I went to school for six years, if you include my master's degree, to be a teacher. Um, and when I got out, my highest paying year was $38,000, and that was working 40 to 50 hours a week. I spent tens of thousands of dollars to get to be a teacher that capped out at $38,000, 50 hours a week for 10 years. How can we expect to spend nothing on our businesses and get raises, right? So put in the work, if you put in the work, and if you invest in your business, the raises are much more lucrative. Any silver or above in the room will tell you that. Can I, can I hear that, silvers and above? Okay. So if you want to fail in this business, do not invest. 
If you want to be successful, make sure you are investing back into your business. And I like even to put a dollar amount to it, I would say if you are executive or lower, everything you make after you're purchasing your oil should be going back into your business. Until you get to that silver level, just invest, invest, invest. You're going to grow faster. Um, my favorite verse since I was a little girl has been Jeremiah 29, 11. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you a hope and a future. <laughs> my prayer is that you'll step out in faith today and decide that you are all in with this business. Your future will be full of blessings. Have a great day.